All right, guys, welcome back to the garage. It's another day. It's Monday, May the 31st, last day of May. And uh, back in the garage today, we're doing some more uh, priming or planning to do some more priming. Yesterday, we completed the uh, trunk lid or boot lid, whatever you want to call it. So we've got that into high build primer here on the inside. And we've got that support structure also primed. So today, I thought I would start working on the interior panels. Uh, so this is the hood the bonnet here ready to go just going to start scratching this down with some probably 180 grit to get that ready for some high build primer I think we'll also do the uh, interior of the doors not going to worry about the fenders those are going to be uh, black epoxy most of them actually already have black epoxy on them and then they, those will be truck bed lined on the inside so they won't be getting painted but they will be getting primed just with epoxy before we go with the uh, Raptor liner bed liner but we need to do the doors, so after we get the hood scratched down, I think what we'll do is we'll bring the doors up, scratch them down so we can prime them at the same time and get that out of the way. So enough talking, let's start uh, sanding and uh, we'll get this into high build primer. All right, we got the inside of the uh, hood all scratched down and cleaned up, so that's ready for primer. I am gonna go ahead and prime this without doing the doors. We'll do the doors separately. Uh, this is probably a big enough panel for me just to worry about as a one single piece so we'll go ahead and we'll prime this so we're just about to mix up our primer over there but uh, yeah so I'll give you a quick look at that before it goes into gray urethane high build primer. Alright just after 7 p.m. on Monday night and uh, just out in the garage to uh, clean up and take a quick uh, look and everything looks like it's sprayed out pretty well and I'm just uh, about to head inside and watch uh, game 7 of the uh, Montreal and Toronto hockey game so go Leafs go anyway that looks good uh, we'll just set this aside for now we're gonna work on the top side of these panels and get the uh, polyester primer on probably next so stay tuned for that hopefully tomorrow depends on weather alright guys welcome back to the channel now Tuesday and we're just checking out the uh, panels from the last couple of days on the undersides of the boot and bonnet or the trunk and hood and we're going to allow this to dry and cure and shrink a little bit before we uh, start to sand on it. So it's a good opportunity for us to uh, flip these panels over and work on the top side. So the process is going to be a little bit different for the top side of these panels as mentioned in a previous video. Uh, the bottom side we just hit with a high build urethane primer. And what we're going to do for the top side of these panels just to make sure that they're laser straight or as straight as I can get them is we're going to actually apply some Feather Fill G2 which is a polyester primer. We're going to probably hit that uh, top side with two to three coats, two to three wet coats of this polyester primer before we move on to the next step. So we'll get these panels uh, flipped over and we're not going to do anything further with the support structure. That's going to go into a safe spot where it doesn't get any more overspray on it. That's just going to be sanded down lightly and go directly into color and the clear coat. So we'll get that out of the way and we'll just concentrate on the uh, boot and bonnet lids themselves. So we'll flip those over and I've looked at the uh, technical data sheet for the uh, G2 primer and it's telling me that I need to uh, sand my epoxy base coat down to, well since this epoxy has been sitting for longer than seven days, the open window has passed. That means I need to scratch this down or abrade it for the uh, polyester primer to stick to it and it's telling me that I need to sand that down to uh, 320 grit and uh, before we proceed to the next step, which will be spraying the actual polyester primer. All right, guys, I think we're just about ready to spray. The panels have been cleaned down twice, and of course they've been sanded down to uh, 320 grit. They look to be in pretty good shape. I've done the body work on these panels prior to me putting it in the epoxy uh, primer coat, so uh, the body work is pretty much there. There needs to be some, maybe some refinement happening after I start blocking this down a bit more, but uh, it's looking good so far. And we've got our primer gun all ready to go. We've got a dedicated primer gun for polyester primer. This has a 2.3 tip, which is pretty large for those of you who don't know. Uh, normally I spray my base coat, clear coat, with about a 1.2 to 1.3 tip. A regular high build primer, um, I normally spray with a 1.8 tip, and I've got a dedicated gun for that over there. So we're going to be a pretty big tip for this polyester primer. I think you can spray up to a 3.0 tip for this polyester and that'll really put the material down. 
All right, we've got it mixed up already in the uh, in the can. We've got our cup ready. We've got our mask ready. We'll give this some one more quick cleanup and uh, close the garage doors up, and we'll get ready to put this into three coats of the polyester primer. All right, just uh, taking a look at the completed panels. So the uh, boot lid and the bonnet are now done on the top side with that top side with that uh, polyester primer. And it looks uh, not too bad. There's a few areas uh, where I've missed. I can see a few little tiny dents. So I missed that in my first initial rough-in bodywork. A couple dents there, one little dent over there. And there's a few little areas on the, uh, the hood of the bonnet that don't look so good. This eyebrow in this corner doesn't look great. I didn't do a very good job of shaping that. But some of the other areas that I did uh, some extensive bodywork look pretty good. This nose piece doesn't look too bad. I missed a spot over here with some bodywork, apparently. So. Those will all become apparent once you spray this with uh, gray primer. Anyway, we'll let this cure for the next uh, couple of days before we start block sanding this down. I did have one uh, discussion point on the polyester primer. Let's go over so to the So a quick bench. tip on the uh, polyester primer if you've not used this before. It's not like regular primers where there's probably about an hour or more of window to use this product. So this has got a very short pot life. It's got a 35 minute pot life. So by the time you spray two coats, you're pretty much through the pot life. And what I mean by pot life is that it will harden. Basically, after 35 minutes, it'll start to harden in the gun. If you've not sprayed it out, it's going to harden inside your gun, and it's going to be a real mess. So just be aware that it's got a 35-minute pot life to be able to use the product that you've mixed. So I suggest that you mix the product in batch sizes that you're going to be able to use up in the time allotted. And I thought I'd take a minute or two just to tell you about the plans for painting this car, all of the external panels at least. As you know, the body tub's already been painted, just waiting for the external panels to be painted. And uh, there is some concern about color matching across the panels if I'm painting them independently. So here is what the plan is to try to uh, mitigate that to a degree. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to spray. I don't have enough room to spray everything in this garage at one point in time unfortunately. I don't know if I'd want to do that anyway because uh, I lose concentration fairly quickly when you're doing multiple panels. It's easy to screw up if you're trying to rush through things. So I prefer to do a smaller amount of panels versus all of the panels at the same time. Having said that, the plan is to spray the boot lid and the bonnet lid together on one day. Um, that will also include the uh, ghost stripe uh, layout that I'm going to have to do on this bonnet. I'm still going to do that. It may not turn out as expected, but we're going to attempt it at least. So that will be one day's worth of spraying there as far as the base and clear coat. Uh, what I'm going to do then um, to again mitigate the chance of uh, the colors being off between panels, I'm going to spray the left side panels of the car one day and I'm going to spray the right hand side panels of the car one day. So front and rear fender and door will do one day uh, for the right side, let's say and then front, uh, front fender, rear fender, and door for the left side will be another day. We'll paint and clear coat those so there will be at least a, a match per side, let's say, if you're looking at it. There's less of a chance of things not matching. So that's the plan right now. Um, so there you have it. So while that polyester primer is setting up, I'm going to continue to work on uh, doing some of the other panels and getting them prepped for primer. I think the next uh, two panels I'm going to do are the interiors of the doors and those will just get the uh, urethane primer, not the polyester primer. So the two doors will be next, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll start tackling the fenders. Again, most of them have been epoxied on the inside with uh, black epoxy. I think there may be one or two that I'd have to go back and have a look at. I don't think I did all of them, but what we'll do is we'll make sure that we have a good coat of uh, black epoxy primer on the inside of each of those fenders before we do a probably just some urethane, uh, uh, some high build urethane primer that we can sand down quickly and then we'll end up doing a top coat of uh, Raptor liner on the inner fenders. So the uh, objective of course is to do the exterior of the fenders in a polyester primer, but uh, we'll get to that point in the future. I'm going to do the back sides of the panels first, followed by the top sides. Alright guys, now Wednesday afternoon after work, and uh, we're starting to work on the doors. We've moved the, uh, the boot and the bonnet outside to the driveway just to uh, get some sun on it. Not a bad day today. So that's out there uh, hardening away. And uh, so I've got the hardware taken off this one. Hinges and uh, mechanism are taken off this one. Still have to do it on that one, but we're going to sand this one down first. 
Again, we're going to prime the underside of this first just with a high build urethane primer and then we'll flip it over later once this bottom side is dry and we'll coat the top side with the uh, high build polyester primer. All right, first coat of high build urethane primer. coat here after our uh, flash time. I'm just going to hit the outside edges now. I'm not going to do the center anymore that's covered with the door panel. Two coats is enough there. So we'll just do another quick coat around the outside edges and we'll call that done.
guys. I thought I would do a quick uh, how-to video on how to clean your spray gun. And uh, a couple of the guys have been asking for this. So this is what I do. Again, it's not necessarily what everybody will do, but this is what I do. Generally, I'll, I'll clean my spray guns, obviously, between uh, any coats of primer, base coat, or clear coat. So after I'm done with uh, spraying, I won't do it necessarily between uh, coats. So in this instance, with the high-build primer, the high-build urethane primer that I sprayed today, I was able to get the three coats done within the pot life of the product that I was using. If you remember me talking about yesterday, there are possibilities where you may want to clean your gun in between using the same product. For example, yesterday with the polyester primer where it's got a very short life, I think that had a 35 minute shelf life, and you're needing to mix another batch, it's sometimes a good idea to actually stop, clean your gun out before you do your third coat. So it's really depending on the product you're using, but for the most part I'll be able to spray either a you know, a high build urethane primer, a base coat, or a clear coat, all coats before, chain, before cleaning the gun at the end. I don't clean between each coat, just at the end of the uh, preparation. All right, just wanted to give you a quick rundown of what I have here as far as um, products are concerned. So what I tend to like to use is a lacquer thinner. Um, so I've just got a uh, 3.78, 4 liter uh, jug of lacquer thinner here. This can be, uh, you can buy specific uh, gun wash they call it, uh, which is basically lacquer thinner anyway. Um, this is available at my local uh, you know, Home Depot or Lowe's, so that's what I usually use to clean my guns. I'm going to need something to put that in, usually a small container uh, that I just keep continuously using and cleaning out. You'll need a couple brushes, this is like a toothbrush, and then you'll need a smaller sort of pipe cleaner style brush, something like this. I also really, really like this aerosol cleaner that I can buy at my local uh, parts store. So it's got a tip specifically that fits into the gun. You can blast aerosol through it. In some cases uh, it works so well that you won't need to actually use the brushes depending on what kind of product you're using. If you're using a base coat or clear coat often this is probably good enough. But if you're using something like a heavy poly primer uh, then you'll definitely probably need to use the brushes. One of the other things I like to have on hand are these double bis uh, cleaning bottles, gun cleaning bottles and then they're quite handy for putting the uh, lacquer thinner or gun wash into. One quick tip on these, um, they are kind of self priming so wherever you have the tube sitting down under the fluid it will actually pull fluid up and it will continuously drip so you've got to be careful that you don't uh, leave this tube stuck in the fluid otherwise your bottle is going to become self draining the next time you want to use this there'll be nothing in it. So this process that I'm going to show you just involves us using a traditional um, gravity feed gun with a either a metal or a plastic cup attached. If you want to go uh, one better than that there's obviously this process here with the double, bu double bis D cups. There are other types of systems. 3M has their own uh, system but these double bis cups are a disposable cup and they uh, help with the cleanup considerably but obviously there's a cost attached to that. Alright let's go. So generally the first thing I do when I'm finished spraying, and here's our gun that we just finished spraying our primer, what I'll do is I'll just put some lacquer thinner in the cup and I'll just shake it around to thin out what's in the actual cup and I'll actually trigger it to try to get some of the fluid out of the gun. So I just sort of shake it. I don't know if you can see that's probably off camera. I've got our cup that we use to mix our paint with. So I'm basically just shaking and emptying out that thinner. I've seen some guys actually just add compressed air to this, to this gun at this point and spray that lacquer thinner out into the air or into the atmosphere, but I prefer just to sort of shake it, run it through the gun and empty it into that dirty cup that we've used to mix the paint already. All right, so after we use that, uh, run that little bit of lacquer thinner through the gun, and we'll just get a little bit more, then I start to break the gun down into its components. And we'll do that in just a second once we finish draining the rest of this thinner. All right, I've drained out uh, that lacquer thinner that I had in the cup. And you can see it cleans that out pretty well if you just sort of swirl that around and run it through the gun. It gets it relatively clean. So at this point now, I'm just going to break the gun down. I'm going to take the cup off and I'm going to give the cup a quick cleaning with the lacquer thinner. I don't generally use the uh, aerosol cleaner on this part. I'll actually save that for the actual gun. So we'll just break this down and we'll hit it with some lacquer thinner. And we'll clean this cup up and lid up.
All right, the next part is to start breaking our gun down. And I've got a, uh, a little container of lacquer thinner here standing by. We've got our gun wrench here standing by. So we'll just start to disassemble it. And we're going to drop that right into the uh, small container of thinner. Take our fluid tip off. Pull our needle out. Pull our needle out. So that's done. So we're going to concentrate on cleaning this gun body first. So I like to start using a, just a paper towel and the, uh, the squeeze jug first and just uh, sort of spray a good coating of lacquer thinner over the outside of the gun just to wipe off any excess from the outside and get that fairly clean before we concentrate on the inside. Again, this is a primer gun specifically for primer, so it's not going to be really, really clean in the end. It does get quite a bit of uh, a use and abuse, let's say. Then I like to start spraying a bit of fluid inside. And again, you can have this exit over your cup. So you can save your excess. This is where you want to start getting your pipe cleaner and just get in there as best as you can, clean out the uh, small areas. Give your toothbrush a good uh, workout. And then we'll use our aerosol cleaner. Give it a wipe down with paper towel, and we'll call that done. Just give it a shake to get all any of the excess thinner out, and we'll call that gun clean. Clean enough for a primer gun. All right, let's concentrate now on the rest of the components. So we've got our needle, get some fresh paper towel, just give this a quick wipe down, get any paint residue, primer residue off of it, set it aside, we'll do our spring for our fluid control. Set that aside. We'll do our cap that screws that spring in. We'll do that next. All right, so that leaves our cap and our fluid tip. Let's do our cap first. So again, toothbrush. Give it a good, uh, good scrub. Especially on the air horns. What I like to do then is just to take the uh, aerosol, give it a quick blast. Quick dry down. Call that done. Last is our fluid tip. Back to our pipe cleaner. Back to our aerosol spray. Dry that down. So that's all the components clean, and what I like to do is just to reassemble the gun loosely so it's ready to go for the next time. So I'll come back and I'll just reassemble the gun in front of you and then we'll call this done. Alright, the leftover thinner here, you can actually keep that if you want. You can recycle this, put that in a uh, 
Usually what I use is a, a glass mason jar with a tight fitting lid or a ball jar. You can save that and reuse that. So we're going to take our gun, there we go, you can see that. Start with your needle in the back, thread it through, in, spring. This is your fluid control tip. Normally I screw it in just so I can start feeling tension on the trigger. So I'll leave it there and we'll put our fluid tip in loosely again just hand tight I always check my guns when I'm going to spray anyway and we'll put our fluid tip on or not our fluid tip our cap on again just loosely assemble the gun back we'll get our cup and our lid and the gun is clean ready to be used for the next round. So that's it. That's the uh, gun cleaning video. Alright guys, one more last look for the night. And it uh, looks like it's sprayed up pretty nicely. Not much to see. Um, I haven't done the hinges because I'm planning on getting new hinges. I'm still not happy with the hinges that I've got for this car. So those I'm going to invest in some new hinges. I've had uh, problems with hinges on this car. I think I've gone through about three different sets that I haven't been happy with. So I'll finally just break down and purchase a brand new set as opposed to uh, finding a good use set or a rebuildable set. So anyway, those look good. So what the uh, process is, the same as before. Uh, we'll let these dry overnight. And then what we'll do is we'll start working on the top side of these and get them into polyester primer. So that will be the plan probably for tomorrow evening, depending on the weather. I think it might be supposed to rain tomorrow, so it might be fairly high humidity, so I may not be able to spray tomorrow. But we'll see. Uh, if not, we can start uh, working on the uh, fenders. Uh, this fender in front, by the way, is not part of the car. Uh, this is just a spare fender if you're thinking that I need to do some body work and uh, repairs on this fender. This actually is just a spare, and we're keeping it available because I like uh, knowing the location of the original stripe on this fender so I'm going to have to put that stripe back on when we do the uh, striping of the hood and the fenders. Anyway all four fenders are here in black epoxy so got a good start on those and got roughed in body work on those as well. So that will be up after we do the top sides of the doors in polyester. We'll come back and we'll do the fenders in polyester and as I mentioned I think there's a couple of fenders that I might actually need to do some black epoxy on the inside before we progress any further on that. All right, that's it for tonight, guys. We'll uh, get back out here when we can, but we'll uh, call this an end of this video, and we'll upload this, and uh, again, get back out here tomorrow, hopefully, and continue on. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for commenting, and thanks for subscribing.